Did you know you could get 240 megapixel photos out of your Sony camera? We'll find out how. So you may have heard about the pixel shift technology and there are certain cameras for different manufacturers that have this technology and they have slightly different names. But what we're going to do today in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do this on a Sony camera, the Sony A7R5, how to process those images and how to get yourself a 240 megapixel photograph. So currently, I believe only a few cameras from Sony allow you to do this, the Sony Silver R4, which turn your 61 megapixel photos to 240 megapixels, as well as the Sony A7R5, which also does the same thing, and the Sony A1, which I believe goes from 50 megapixels to about 200 megapixels or something like that. I'll show you how to set this up on a Sony A7R5, but the same process applies to other Sony cameras. So first of all, what is this feature or this technology. It is called the pixel shift technology. So it allows you to create images at a much higher resolution than the camera sensor normally allows you to do. What happens is that the sensor is physically shifted by a fraction of a pixel or an entire pixel as it takes multiple shots of the same image. After this, all of these images are composited together and combined together either in camera or in a software. And, and for Sony specifically, I'll show you how you can do it in the Sony Imaging Edge app. As a result of this, each pixel has way more data now than your camera's native sensor, which in turn will give you a higher resolution photo. But this does not come with some drawbacks, and I'll go into some of those later on. So keep watching. But if you're new here, if you like all things camera filmmaking photography, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, that will be greatly appreciated. And if you are returning to the channel again to hang out again, thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate you. So on a Sony camera, you can do a pixel shift shot with either four images or 16 images. A 16 image one is going to definitely give you way more resolution, but also the file size is going to be much larger. And I'll be showing you later on in the computer that difference. And we're going to also compare whether there is an actual visual difference between a regular 61 megapixel photo, a four pixel shift one, and a 16 photos pixel shift photo, which is 240, roughly 240 megapixels. So to get your shot, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. We have to make sure that the brightness of whatever you're shooting, the environment, and the exposure is not changing because if you have constantly changing brightness levels between all of these photos, it's going to be harder for the software to combine all of these photos together. If you're shooting highly reflective surfaces like glass or metal, just make sure that subject brightness stays consistent throughout all of these shots. Another thing to keep in mind is that any subtle movement may affect your pixel shift shot. What you can do is either set your camera to timer so you pressing the shutter button will not introduce camera movement by mistake into each of the shots. So the best advice is to use a self timer so you don't have to physically go and press the shutter or even your camera's app. Another thing to keep in mind is that pixel shift is not going to work if there is a lot of movement in your frame. I tried a few of these in a, in a scenery where there was where the tree branches were moving a lot because it was really windy that day. So we go and check out how that performed, but you won't be able to get a pixel shift multi-shot with someone jumping, for example. That's just not gonna work. It's meant for static shots. So in order to access it, go to your camera's menu, go to shooting, drive mode, pixel shift, multi-shooting, and then you can select the option you would like to use. You can select either shooting four photos or 16 photos, and you can select the interval time in between each of those photos. Another thing to make sure as well is I like to keep my white balance to be set manually so that the auto white balance doesn't shift in between each of those photos. And I also like to set my focus manually. So auto focus first and then turn it back to manual so that that focus doesn't shift as it takes the different photos, especially when you're taking 16 of them. This is just going to make it easier for the software to later on combine the photos. Once you're ready, you just take your photos and there is a little icon at the bottom of the camera that says that you are in the pixel shift multi-shooting and how many photos you're taking for that. Some of the drawbacks, as you probably kind of already guessed, is that you cannot shoot moving subjects. You have to be very, very stable. So try to shoot on a tripod. You really have to minimize movement in the camera pretty much at all costs to make sure this works. 
there can be a little bit of movement in your frame, but it's best to not have any. So let's go to the computer and let's see how we combine them and let's compare these photos. You can go and download Sony's Imaging Edge app and in the viewer, you can select the folder where all your multi-shift photos are. So I've tried it with four photos and 16 photos. So you select all of these photos, right click and select create pixel multi-shift shooting composite image. You can choose to create one image or create four images from 16 images, but I'll just go with this first option right here. I'll put method to what it is. And in motion correction, you can select to stabilize a composite image if it contains a moving subject. So it's mostly meant for tiny movement in the scene. So let's say trees moving because of the high winds, or maybe there's a car in the distance of a large landscape photo. You can select that if that applies to your photo. In this particular photo, it does, but in this one, it doesn't. After that, you can save it to the ARQ format or a TIFF file or a JPEG, but I normally wanna do more corrections to the photo after the fact, so either ARQ or TIFF works for me. We'll click save and let the software do its thing. And I've gone ahead and done a few of these ones already, so we're gonna go side by side and compare them to the original 61 megapixel photo to see whether these ones have more resolution. I have three photos. I have the regular one here, which is the 61 megapixel one. And this is 9504 by 6336 pixels. Then we have this second one. This is the four shot multi-shot, which is the same dimensions as the regular one. The file size for a regular 61 megapixel photo on the Sony a7R5 is 120 megabytes. When you combine the four photos, it's 470 megabytes. So file sizes can get really large, really quick. And this is another con with shooting pixel shift photos is that you get larger file sizes. And if you go to the 16 shot, which I have here, the file size is so large, it's taking a while for Adobe Bridge to preview it. But there we go. So the dimensions are now 19,008 by 12,672 pixels, which is pretty insane. And the file size is massive. 1.83 gigabytes for one photo. Let's see if it's actually worth it then. So this is the regular 61 megapixel photo on the left of this battery. We'll zoom in here about 100%. And let's go to this pixel shift multi photo. Let's go to this pixel shifted photo of four shots. And now I'm um, zoomed about 100% as well. Without pixel peeping, there isn't much of a difference. Let's zoom in a little bit more. At 300%. So I guess the one on the left, the non-pixel shifted photo, it's a little bit blurry. You can see here Sony here. The word Sony on this one are a little bit more clear, but just by a tiny bit. And to be honest, this is me really pixel peeping. In reality, you're not going to go compare these side by side and say, hey, yours is not a pixel shift photo. I really see pixel shift as something where you want to take photo of something and just get the maximum re resolution that you can at the moment. For example, if you're photographing artwork or maybe um, archiving museum pieces and you wanna take a really high resolution photo of that or anything along those lines. For daily stuff, probably not worth it. But let's compare another photo. Let's compare this one, the regular photo, with the 16 photo pixel multi-shift photo. So this, it's a larger image, so obviously it's taking a little bit of time to load. So this one at, let's go to 100%. This is the, on the left at 100%, and this one at 100%. This is what we get at 100%. So you're obviously able to zoom in a lot more because you have a larger image. But let's compare them side by side. I mean, yeah, I can't really see much of a difference, I guess. The 16 multi-chip photo seems a little bit sharper in the words. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. I guess a tad sharper. Let's go and compare both multi 
shift photos. The one on the left, this is the four photo one, and this is one, the 16 photo multi shift photo. Yeah, here you can tell a little bit more that there's more differences in sharpness. So there's obviously the larger one, higher megapixel count one, it's a tad sharper, but just by a bit. Let's look at this lens. So on this side, we have the regular photo, and on this side, we'll use this one, the 16 shift. Whoa, that is a lot, okay. On the left, we zoom in. Okay, so you tell me if you see any differences. Can you tell which one's sharper? It's the one on the right, the multi-shift one, really worth that extra tiny bit of sharpness? I don't know. You can tell me in the comments below. But I guess as we scroll through this, you can see that this 45 is a little bit sharper, the one on the right here as opposed to this one. And if you go to the detail of this, there's a little bit more detail preserved here than here. So we have here a regular photo and the multi-shift on the right. This is a four photo multi-shift one. And let's zoom into the trees because there was some wind in this shot and let's see if it was able to combine the photos properly. And at first glance, it seems okay. Seems like the movement of the tree leaves didn't really impact the composite here of the four photos. Let's take a look at the 16 photo one. This is the 16 pixel multi shift photo. And as we scroll here, we can see, yeah, it seems like everything seems okay. Oh, I see something. Right here, seems like there this movement got blurred out a little bit, and there was some uh, just some fringing here, and I think that's probably due to the movement of the leaves. So in the 16 photo one, we do see that the software struggles to composite this image when there is more movement. Seems like some stuff happening here too, but here as well but again when you zoom out and you look at the entire image as a whole it's not too noticeable i guess it is noticeable right here so if there is even a little bit of movement in your shot and if you want to still shoot in pixel multi shift you may probably want to select the four photo one if you just select the 16 photo one the software might have a difficult time compositing all of this together but we have now this regular photo on the left and the 16 photo multi shift on the right. Let's zoom in and check it out. Let's look at the pattern in here. Okay, so yeah, here you can tell that the pixel shift multi shot photo has more detail in the pattern here of this wall and the squares as opposed to the one on the left. And there's a little bit more detail preserved here too. So there is a bit of a difference when you really zoom in. As well with the width, there is more detail preserved here as opposed to this one. Now let's compare the four shot one as well. So I have the four shot one on the left and the 16 shot on the right. Can't really tell much of a difference on this one. Let's go back to that wall. Okay, so seems like, yeah, the 16 one is a little bit more sharp in some of these details, like these grids, as opposed to this one. Everything I'm looking at just becomes pixels now because I've been looking at it for so long trying to pixel peep. But anyways, that is how you use pixel shift on the Sony a 7 r 5 and it's also very similar to other Sony cameras that also allow you to shoot with the multi with the pixel shift function. And let me know in the comments below if you think you'll be using this feature and whether you think it's worth the extra file sizes. And if you learned something new from this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. And here are a couple more videos you could probably watch if you're into Sony cameras. And I'll see you there.